Hey YouTube, um, there seems to have been some confusion over what quarter saw lumber is and I think that what's wrong here is a lot of people are using the verbiage improperly. First of all, <clears throat> um, let me explain this to you. I would like you to imagine this as a log and the red rings there are annual rings, annual growth rings. Okay. Now, the thing you need to understand is the words quarter sawn do not describe an action. They're not a verb. Quarter sawn is an adjective, okay? And the whole uh, ver the verbiage for this should be quarter sawn lumber. Now, quarter sawn lumber can be cut a number of different ways. There is not one way to cut quarter sawn lumber. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of times people get into the habit of doing something and they think that's the only way to do it. That's one of the worst things you can do to yourself to make yourself end up being poor in the long haul because you're not learning anything new. So, anyway, let me explain this to you. So, we have annual rings here on a log. Okay, that's basically what you're looking at. Now let's imagine that we start cutting uh, boards off of this. So these yellow lines here can be the cuts of the sawmill. So in other words, we're cutting the first flitch and then we're cutting succession bo successive boards after that. And let's say you get down to this point and um, I'll take some of this off of here so that you can... Uh, recognize you know what this would look like if it actually was cut. Let me just take this off of here. <clears throat> okay so now we're at this point here. So we've cut all these other boards off. We've taken them away and basically you know we're slab cutting. This is called slab cutting. Now when you slab cut um, you're not exactly quarter sawing uh, as far as a lot of people's verbiage goes you're slab cutting however there are quarter sawn boards in here and I'll show you where they are and what they look like now the quarter sawn boards no matter how you do this and you have to realize a quarter sawn board originates around the pith or the center of the tree to get ideal quarter sawn boards, you need to be able to have the center of the tree as part of your cut. Now that's pretty hard to make a bunch of cuts from the center of the tree, but I'm going to show you how it can be done. Now, <clears throat> and a lot of people don't know this, what I'm about to tell you. But anyway, I have some lines here. Now, if you look at these lines, this one's perpendicular to the board. Imagine these, these lines are all boards, okay? So this is perpendicular to the board, straight up and down. This one is on a 30 degree angle to this, and this one is on a 60 degree angle. Now, <clears throat> anything between straight and this line is going to be quarter sawn. So I'm going to show you how this works. Now let's just imagine this was a 30 degree angle tool. Okay. Now, if you set that on any of these boards that are in the purple, you will find out that when you put a line on a growth ring, now don't forget this pink here is a, represents a uh, board. If you put the line on the growth ring and the line of the annual growth ring is to the right of this angle, that is a quarter sawn board. Doesn't matter what anybody says, that's quarter sawn. So, in truth, all of these boards that are in the center here, there's about one, two, three, four of them for certain, are quarter sawn boards. Now, we can move this up and we can say, well, okay, we have a yellow one there. That's still quarter sawn, okay? So, we're going to move up a little further and then we go to this one. And you see how the red line moved to the left side of that? That means that the angle is not between 30 and 90. It's beyond the 30. 
that's where Rifson starts. So Rifson is between 30, that would be here, and 60. Okay, that's Rifson. And anything after 60 then becomes quarter son. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this, uh, or not quarter son, it becomes uh, slab son. Sorry about that. Alright, so now I'm going to grab a hold of this angle. Oop, let me just move this. And these angles aren't changing as I move this. And I'm going to show you the difference. Now, here we have a 60 degree angle. Now if we look at this board, do you see how the line is to the right side of that 60? Technically, this is Rifson from here in this direction. It's Rifson. So in other words, from here right across the log is a Rifson board. As you come out here further, it may turn into quarter sawn. So quarter sawn, riff sawn is a description or an adjective of the noun lumber. It tells you what type of lumber it is. Now this slab sawn, if anything from here over, and we can find that easily. I'll just show you how you find that. If you come on to this one, okay, you see how this is totally to the left of this blue line? This becomes slab sawn. Now, one of the best ways to tell the difference between slab sawn, let me go back to this, between slab sawn and rift sawn, I'm going to show it to you on uh, in some real boards here. This board and you can see those things there. Think of a smiley face, okay? When the board's laying flat, this here is a slab sawn piece of wood. Slab sawn. Okay? Now, slab sawn is not, you know, bad wood. It's just not as good as quarter sawn. This is rift sawn. You can see there's an angle there, and the angle is 30 or more. Now the angle we're talking about is the angle that from here and to here. So in other words, you put a gauge here and you put a 30 degree on it. If you can't touch this and this, then that determines what type of angle it is. So that's Rifson. This, on the other hand, this piece of oak, this is quarter sawn. You see how the, ring, the growth rings go straight up and down? Okay, so those are the three. Quarter sawn, riff sawn, let me put them all together here. Quarter sawn, riff sawn, slab sawn. That's what you got there. Now, the difference in these pieces of wood makes a big difference in how the wood reacts to certain conditions. For instance, slab sawn wood because of its nature, because of the way it's uh, made, it has a tendency to cup, okay? <clears throat> so, just to recap this, you're slab sawing this log. However, in everything in the purple here, all of the logs in the purple is considered um, quarter sawn, okay? Quarter sawn. So, no matter how you cut, you don't have to do what people think is called quarter sawing to get down to this quarter sawn wood. All you need to do is slab cut, straight cuts, and you will get quarter sawn wood. Now, that's how that works. It's 30 degree from zero to th from 90 degrees to 30 degrees is quarter sawn. 90 to 30 quarter sawn. 30 to 60, riff sawn. Anything more than 60 is slab sawn. I don't care what anybody else says or what they've tried to explain to you. This is the truth. This is the way it is. This is how what this is called. So think of the, the sawn. When you hear the words quarter sawn, do not think of a procedure because there's many ways to get it. Quarter sawn is a description of lumber. It's a type of lumber. It shows you how the lumber um, annual rings go. 
in the board. Okay, so let me just move over to something else here. Just hang on a second, my computer's uh, a little bit slow. <clears throat> yeah, so anyways, again, Cortison describes the type of board annual rings, how the annual rings are going. Okay, here we go. All right, now, what I want to show you here is this. Imagine that this thing here, then, is also, I'll just shut this off for a second. Imagine that this is a quarter sawn log. Okay, that's what you saw me cut the other day. I cut the log down, or I mean across, turned it, and then split those logs, and I ended up with this pizza pie here, this wedge, with the annual rings in it. So now, when I take those annual rings, and I turn it, and I show you how to, uh, what, what is a popular way of cutting quarter sawn wood. Let me find my uh, switch to turn this on. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so now here's how I've been cutting that. Now, if you're not watching me closely, you're not getting this. What I did was I took this side of the board, the straight side, I put it against the little dog stop, and I'm going to draw a stop here, the little dog stop, okay? And the first thing I did was I made a two inch cut. This is considered quarter sawn. Even though we have these pieces here in the middle that actually go to slab sawn, this part is quarter sawn. So this is the part you're going to use. Okay, when you trim this board out, if you're a purist like uh, one of my um, viewers there, then you will need to cut this so that none of these rings are more than 30% um, away from perpendicular. After you cut this, okay, after you've cut this, you'll turn the log the opposite way. This side will be facing this way. So in other words, just to give you an example here, um, you're working on making this cut. That's the cut you've made. And this is what disappears. <clears throat> so these pieces that are here are gone. All right. So now you need to turn this, take this whole thing and turn it up so that this flat slab is facing to the side and then you'll cut this out. And then you'll do that again. You'll turn it back so it's looking the way it is now and you'll cut this cut. All the cuts that you see, these yellow lines, are all going to be cut by a wood miser horizontally. That's the point. You're switching it back and forth, back and forth. And if you watch my video closely, you will see that I did that to every single cut on the quarter sawn board. Okay? So, keep in mind, like I'm saying, that quarter sawn is a description of the piece of wood, the annual ring shapes, how the rings go. If the rings go like this, Let's say this is a 2x6, 2x8, whatever. If the rings go like this, it's quarter sawn. If the rings go like this, it's slab sawn. Okay? Because this is what quarter sawn is. If, if the rings, let me just get a, happen to go something more like this, that starts to become rift sawn after you hit the, thir the 60 degrees. From 30 to 60, this becomes riff. From 0 or 90 to 30, it is quarter sawn. All right? That's all this is. You're talking about what the lumber looks like. The process does not matter. When a guy says to me, oh, you don't, you're not quarter sawing a board, <laughs> you're, you're, it, there's no process that can cut quarter sawn boards except one and no one uses it that I know of but I tell you what I'll take this challenge and I'm gonna make a tool that can actually cut pure quarter sawn boards totally out of a lock you'll have waste 
but you'll still be able to cut pure quarter sawn boards. So anyway, what I'm after here, and let me just give you a little story. Um, when I owned my lumber yard, I hired a kid, and uh, I paid him to do one thing and only one thing. I told him that every time he looked at a skid of lumber, every lumber, every skid of lumber that came into my my shop, and you were looking at tractor trailer loads every week, I said, when you see a board that's cut like this with the rings this way, I want you to pull that board out and put it in a special place for me. And I had a place where I would put all these. When I go to Lowe's and I buy boards, I look for this like this. This is what I want. I want these rings like this. Okay? Just like you see there. That's how they have to be. These cup. These come apart sometimes. These give me trouble. These usually do not come apart and they almost never cup. And when you take a two by like this and you cut and you make this into a one by, here's what happens. Or I mean a two by two. Imagine that just this two by two. What happens is in order think of a think of a uh, think of a round cylinder, round piece of pipe. It's very hard to bend a piece of pipe, but if you take that same piece of pipe and you turn it into an oval, okay, like this, it's easy to bend it this way than it is this way. And the same thing with wood. This wood will be, will, in order for this wood to warp, it's going to have to twist rather than warp to the side. So, in other words, if you have this board as a spindle for my porch standing there, it will have to twist like this. Twist rather than bend. Instead of bending like this, it's, it'll twist and it'll still appear straight even if it twists. But if you lock them in at the way I do when I make the handrail, they won't twist. It's just the same as putting weight on them when you're drying lumber. But what I'm saying to you about having this kid pick out this quarter sawn boards for me, because I would use quarter sawn boards like this for things like this. Um, steps that I don't want to warp or cup. Bookcases, bookcase shelves. I don't want them to cup. I buy this wood. So when I go down to Lowe's, I say to them down there, take your forklift. Pull this whole skid of 1 by 12 out and let me look at it. I'm going to pick out the boards I want. Now where I live, 84 Lumber didn't allow you to do that. I don't think they do now, but so I don't go there. But I did go to Lowe's and pick out these boards. So whenever I, I'm using wood that I'm going to build something from that uh, is going to have especially heat in the house, I want this. This here... I don't care when it comes to framing something like framing a house, framing a garage, framing anything. This is fine. But this, I take these boards always from every skid of wood and I put them to the side because no one else seems to understand what they are. But a good carpenter or a good um, furniture maker, a carpenter, or anybody who's experienced with wood will know what I'm talking about here, and this is why I'm trying to explain it to you guys, okay? So this is what you want. When you go to the store and you're going to make your wife a set of uh, shelves or something, look for these boards. There's only about four or five of them in a whole skid of framing lumber, but they're there, and you can find them. Now, to purposely cut them, and this is a different story, now, let me show you something. In order to cut perfectly uh, quarter sawn lumber, which means you always have the uh, annual rings on a 90 degrees here, in other words a straight line goes from this ring to the same ring, perpendicular to the saw to the board or the saw cut, either way. Okay? So in order to get that, the perfect way to do it is to take a wedge set the wedge on the wood miser set the cant the quartered cant quartered okay not really quarter sawn quartered cant one fourth of a cant of a log cant with the curve on it you don't want to cut it into a, a square you want to leave it with the round part because you'll get more wood from here 
you can see that this board is run, the center of the board runs through the center of the pith. Okay, that is a true quarter sawn. Then what you do is after you cut that board out of there, you have to reset this to another setting. So I'm going to make a tool that actually resets, that will reset itself. You'll have to do it manually, but you'll reset it. And you will always get quarter sawn boards, period. There will be no um, question as to whether they're quarter sawn. But I've never seen anybody do it. Okay? I've thought about it for years. I've known it can be done. I just never bothered to do it because I didn't have the bandsaw mill. But I'm going to work on that and see what I can't do with that. Because I think that that's something that, you know, should come out pretty good. Okay? So, <clears throat> just to recap this. The yellow is the saw cut. Here you're slab cutting. No matter how you slab cut, you will get quarter sawn boards in the center of the tree. You can, it, depending upon how thick they are and how you end up when you're cutting, you will get anywhere from two. If they're two by two, if they're two inch boards, you might get two of them. If they're one inch boards, you might get four of them. But the point is, these are boards that do not usually cup. Okay, it's a 90% chance that they won't cup, let's say. But just remember what I said now about the angle. These angles are important. If you hold a square on here and you hold it up and it's 90 degrees and, and these lines are very close to touching that thing straight along, that's quarter saw lumber. The process, hear me, listen to what I'm saying. Those of you who don't who are doubting what I'm what I did out there, the process does not matter. What matters is what the annual ring looks like at the end of the board. You could cut this with a freaking hammer and chisel and still make a quarter uh, sawn board because of how the annual rings go. So when people talk about, oh, you're not doing it right because of the process, that's no different than somebody telling you, oh, you, there's only one way to make potatoes and that's baked. Well, that's baloney. We know that. Well, I'm telling you that there is more than one way to cut quarter saw lumber. And after I make this tool, I'll get it up to you. I don't know if I can do it in the next week or so because I'm pretty booked up. But I'm going to make a tool that adjusts the angle to be able to cut true quarter saw lumber. And what you have to do is all of it has to come through the center. All of your cuts have to originate from the center of the tree. They can go out in different directions but they all have to cut, cut from the center of the tree. To take this tree and turn the angle like it is now, which is what some people think, and to start cutting straight across this angle does not give you quarter sawn boards. And I can prove that just by showing you here what it's going to look like. Okay, If you look close at this board right here, this is what they think quarter sawn is, where you take the log, you quarter it, and then you put the point here straight out. This is not a quarter sawn board. Okay, this is rift sawn. And same thing with rift sawn. There's a way to cut, there's a, a way that the industry cuts rift sawn boards, which is an angle that's greater than um, 30. Remember that. It's a greater angle from board top of board to bottom of board greater than 30. There's a way to cut that in the industry, but that is not the whole way of cutting them. Okay? So, I hope that that clears this up because it's annoying when you know, you're doing something and trying to show someone how to use the tool to do it, and then they question your um, your method. There's a lot of ways to get quarter sawn boards, like I said, and that's one of them. So guys, um, it's late here. I'm inside my home with this uh, computer, and I really am tired, don't have a good talk for you, but I will say this. My dad used to have a saying, and he used to say to me, there are those who know and those who think they know, and that makes all the difference. And what that did for me and that what that made me do was question people when they would say something and make them explain to me why they're saying what they're saying. And when you take this, all this is what I'm working with here, all of this stuff is nothing more than geometry. 
okay? It's a math subject. And all it, all it does is tell you how to cut this. And cutting these boards like this, this is a traditional way of cutting quarter sawn boards. You quarter the log, and then you cut the bottom, you turn it, you cut the bottom, you turn it, you cut the bottom, you turn it, you cut the bottom, until you're finally in rift cut and waste. This is how they do it because they're not wasting so much. When I make this tool, you're going to find out that there's going to be a lot of waste here. But I can cut true, true quarter sawn boards but they're not going to be the, the waste is not worth it that's what we're after by you know not having the waste and the other part that I wanted to tell you is when you go to the store and you buy wood and you're going to do anything that's going to be inside buy wood that has this on the edge I'm talking about the short edge lay the board down flat and if it has these buy them I used to say to the kid that worked for me if it has a, ha a happy face or an unhappy smile, if it has a happy smile or an unhappy smile, I don't want it. I want parentheses. So in other words, whether the parentheses went that direction or they went this direction, it doesn't matter. That's what I want on the board. And this kid did nothing but pull them out of stacks of lumber for me every day because I used to use them. I needed them to be able to make things that were going to be inside the house and I didn't want them to warp. Window sills. You make window sills like this that are extra wide. I've built a lot of houses where women like window sills. You know, they like to be able to put a flower pot on a window sill. You use this kind of board and I guarantee you the window, the pot will be falling off the window sill because this board will cup one way or the other and it and the pot won't sit there so I use quarter sawn boards then to fit window sills out of you don't you need it for the packing alongside or the top header of a window but you need it for the sill now this is years of experience talking here I didn't just start doing this stuff yesterday I'm 63 years old I made my living doing this and I made a very good amount of money doing it so whether you listen to me or not doesn't matter. What matters is what I'm saying to you here is the truth. And it's the way it is. Because I know. Alright guys. So that's it for today. Um, hopefully tomorrow I'll do some more quarter sawing. I was working on a, uh, my daughter's car. I, I got a freaking car here called a Dodge Durango. And I got to tell you I call it the Junk Dango. Because there is nothing on that car that's not broke. Ah, so it was a tough day with that, but we'll get it. So, okay, this is how this is. You can get quarter sawn from what they call slab sawing. You can get quarter sawn from quarter sawing. And you can get quarter sawn from this special method that people don't know by moving the lumber from one point to another, rotating it. Think about this. When you, when you cut a pizza, you are literally cutting a straight line through the center of the pizza. It's the same thing as a tree. When you cut that straight piece, if you cut a, a thin sliver an inch thick on this uh, ring, on these annual rings, you will get a quarter sawn board. So, so people, please, do not say, oh, that's not quarter sawn because you see somebody cutting something. Because when I slab cut and I'm near the middle, I'm cutting quarter sawn boards, whether you like it or not. Guys, have a good one. I am so much enjoying your comments. I've gotten a lot of help with how to fix the different um, uh, things on the on the uh, wood miser. I'm, I think I'm going to go after the uh, dog uh, bolt next when I get a chance. Uh, I've gotten some great ideas for videos. I'm trying to make one for with my backhoe just to show you what I got there. I want to make one for the um, kiln and they're upcoming. That's all I can tell you. So again, have a good one guys. Bye.